I'll start off with uh, karma because that is sort of the most advanced in its uh, uh, development. It is a phase two trial uh, and it uh, uses uh, BB2121 or Idacel as the drug product in this case. And there was uh, 128 patients who were treated on this trial. I think the neat thing about this trial is the fact that it was a global trial and it in fact reproduced exactly what we found in our phase one study. So very reassuring because cellular therapy is a very personalized approach. Um, you know, the toxicities are very typical with this kind of an approach and to be able to deliver the strategy in a global uh, manner was reassuring and reproducing the data in a smaller cohort of patients, which is our phase one trial. So 128 patients were treated. Most CAR T cells in myeloma are directed, in fact, all are directed against BCMA, which is the B-cell maturation antigen. And most of them use the 41BB co-stimulatory domain. Uh, there are a few subtle differences between the different drug products, and I'll talk a little bit about them. Uh, but with the KARMA trial, we saw response rates, depending on the dose of the drug product, anywhere north of 70%. And if you went to the target dose of 450 million cells, it was about 80%. And those patients who actually achieved a complete response had a progression of survival of close to 20 months. So really long follow-up and patients who achieve a, a deep response with these approaches actually have an amazing response. And it is important to recognize and note that these are extremely heavily pre-treated patients. So these are patients who've had pretty much uh, uh, you know, everything which is conventionally available right now. So they've had all the emits, all the proteasome inhibitors and have been exposed to uh, the CD38 monoclonal antibodies. The majority of them are refractory to the vast majority of these drugs. And typically the outcome of these patients is quite poor. So the KARMA trial really has demonstrated that in this very, very heavily pretreated patient population, you're seeing uh, robust responses and the depth of response translates into um, progression-free survivals, which we've never seen before. Um, so really encouraging data. Uh, the toxicity again was very similar to what we found in our phase one trials. So CRS is noted in the majority of patients, but very acceptable most of the them had grade one and two, and grade three and four was hardly ever seen, and when seen was easy to manage. And neurotoxicity, if any, was really hardly seen, very low-grade neurotoxicity. So again, a drug product which has acceptable toxicity with very good efficacy. So we'll wait and see whether this drug product gets approved in the context of myeloma. I'm going to mention several other clinical trials also, which is the uh, CARTITUDE trial, which I uh, mentioned, and the EVOLVE trial using the JCAR product and the Janssen product. Again, all directed against BCMA. The Janssen product has a biopsy epitopic binding towards BCMA and extremely high response rates. Obviously, um, you know, the uh, issue there is the shorter follow-up, but very similar to the car, um, KARMA trial, where in close to 90% of patients actually had a, a deep response and all of them stayed progression-free survival for at least nine months at the time of follow-up. Um, similarly, the uh, JCAR or the Orvacel product uh, was presented. That was the EVOLVE trial. And this was the first time that we have seen pretty robust data with the EVOLVE trial with 61 patients. And if you look at the dose levels, once they get to the therapeutic dose ranges, uh, the overall response rates in this patient population was 90% plus. Again, I think we need to wait and see how it translates into a progression-free survival because we do not have long-term follow-up. And again, the theme here is the toxicities were comparable uh, in general, uh, manageable, and uh, 
was not a big issue in any of these trials. So really exciting data in the context of cellular therapies.